Welcome and warmest greetings to all of you who have come into church today to join us for the second time on a Sunday for Holy Communion since we reopened. It's a joy to be able to worship God in this wonderful space that has been dedicated and worshipped in for thousands of years. So thank you for being here. Um, we, we know that many are still unable to join us for worship. And so we are recording the service and in fact it is going out live. So I'm going to greet all the others who are joining us online right now. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. I hope the safety measures um, inspire confidence uh, for thankful worship and not distract you. We welcome our children whom you might hear a little bit of uh, socially distanced in the West End. Um, and dear Christine has said to me that they have to speak out because they're not very close to one another, they'll just sit two meters apart. Let us begin our worship today following the order of service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us acknowledge God's presence, saying together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and for whom no secret sign cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Will you see? We bring to God our thoughts, our remembrance of wrongdoing, even the feelings we have that are unhelpful to ourselves and to others. And we confess our sins, say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Going to praise God together, saying the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our prayer for the day. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as a mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you see it? Let us now listen to the reading from God's Word. The reading is taken from the Old Testament, 1 Kings 3, 5 to 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen. A great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you stand for the reading of the Gospel? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and he buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets threw out the bad. 
So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you sit? In today's Gospel passage, Jesus continues to speak to his disciples about the Kingdom of God. Now last Sunday, Jesus told us that God's world, the Kingdom of Heaven, is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But today, Jesus gives more examples of God's kingdom. As Jesus speaks, he stirs our imagination. We cannot help but visualize what he describes and we can relate to his examples in our own experiences. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, a very small seed that has a surprising future. I think that all seeds have surprising futures. But this small seed contains a purpose that makes a big difference to the lives of other creatures. Now I can see amongst us, all spatially distanced, some excellent gardeners. I know because I have been to your gardens or seen them. What are the smallest seeds that come to your mind? or the most productive trees and plants that have started from humble beginnings. There is an apple tree in the vicarage garden that began in a tiny seed, but it's now heavy with lots of fruit, and it's been wonderfully fruitful year on year on year for many decades. I and others are going to enjoy a huge crop of apples that I had done absolutely nothing to deserve. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of yeast. Once again, I look around and this time I notice many bakers out there and perhaps online as well, who know all about making bread and other recipes where yeast is the most important ingredient. It is the bit of that recipe that makes all the difference. I watch the Great British Bake Off and the commentators often say now to prove the dough. And they go on and on about how long this needs to take and happen and so on. That unique attribute that makes all the difference, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of yeast. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. And you know that some of my ministry is in Bishop Auckland. And just outside the town is the ancient uh, Roman settlement called Binchester. 
Yes, you guessed it, or perhaps you knew about it. There is a large field there where metal detectors have scoured the field for many years. In Staffordshire, not far from where Brian and I used to live, a couple, couple of treasure seekers uncovered the Staffordshire hoard of ancient gold. And in one of the Sherlock Holmes stories, there's something about someone that found the ancient crown of a king. The kingdom of heaven is exciting. You discover things and is precious. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. This is someone who knows what he is looking for. Now, I'm not an expert in pearls and how they are graded, but this merchant knows what the finest grade of pearl looks like. To this merchant, nothing compares, and that pearl is worth everything. And so it is with God's kingdom. It is worth everything and nothing compares. Finally, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into a sea and catches all types of fish. God's kingdom is a catch-all. God wants everyone to belong because we have all been created for God's kingdom. Every benefit as described in the other examples are intended for us. It is a kingdom that embraces every unique created being and person over all the ages. No wonder in the first reading we heard Solomon wanted his earthly kingdom to reflect God's kingdom for the people he was to govern. That is why he asked God for an understanding mind and the ability to discern between good and evil. And so God granted him a wise and discerning mind. And that is why we are overflowing with desire to tell others about God's kingdom. Why would anyone who has tasted the kingdom of goodness, of God's love, not want others to know that too? Over all the world, there are museums and galleries protecting and displaying treasures and the wonders of discoveries through all the ages. People rave about what they have seen and how it made them feel. And when they return home, they want to tell everyone about that. None of those compare with the treasure that we have in knowing God and receiving everything that we will discover in our relationship with God. The kingdom of God is ours, is yours, is here. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you stand? Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now be seated again as we pray for others as well as for ourselves. Please be seated. God of all creation, you hold the depths of the earth in your hand. You are closer to us than the air we breathe. Fill our souls with your wonderful love and light. Give us strength and courage to reflect that love and light in the world. Let us never shrink back from who we are in you or hide your, our light inside ourselves. Renew in us a sense of joy painting the dark shadows around us with your light, your love and salvation. Hear us today as we pray for a world too often darkened by hatred, evil, power and greed. We pray for all, for all churches, in particular St Mary's and St Andrew's and the churches in our deanery as we tenderly return to our buildings after lockdown. Lord, be with us and guide us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the example of leadership given, by, given to us by your Son, Jesus Christ, in his life on earth. We pray for the renewal of the spirit of humility and a sense of responsibility among world leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our homes and our loved ones, for the freedom and the peace that is ours. May we be sensitive to the needs of those around us and be of help when we can. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray for any known to us and name them quietly in our hearts. We pray your healing presence will calm their fears, ease their pain, and bring light into darkness of all who are sick. We ask that you be with us and all who need your loving touch as we continue to live beneath the shadow of the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have departed this life for any whose anniversaries are around this time. And we pray that they will rejoice in the fullness of your love, in the presence of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers we offer. By the power of the Holy Spirit, work within us and among us to bring your kingdom into this world. Let your will be done, so that all people may live for your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Namastad. We are advised that we will share the peace without moving around. So please do share the peace, but from where you are. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Please remain standing if you can. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you, do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection. Send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by God's book, Christ's body and his blood. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Everyone is welcome to receive communion in one form. The bread that you will receive has been covered throughout this service. Please, when you come forward, place your hands in front of you, palm facing up, and cut. The bread will be placed on your palm without my touching it. I am not permitted to speak and I will wear a mask. 
during the administration of communion. Please also come forward if you wish to receive a blessing. I'm not permitted to speak, but I shall hold my hand above or in front of you and present the symbol of blessing. Please follow the one-way system coming down the central aisle and return to your uh, seats by the side aisles. Alex will come forward in a different way because he's filming and then Sheila and Nancy will come first to set the example of how we receive communion.
Let us pray. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I dearly hope that you have felt God's loving presence in our worship here today. Thank you, Alex, for a live recording, which we will upload onto YouTube so you can watch it and recall this time together as well. Once again, I thank Peter, Nancy, and Sheila, and Christine for guiding us practically and preparing the church for today. We can't have our fellowship time together, our tea and coffee um, at the moment, but hopefully in the not too distant future. Well, thank you, Brian, also on the organ. Next Sunday, there is no service in this church on Sunday morning, but instead our our service in church will be in St. Andrews and that is at a different time of 9.30. That's the first service there since the lockdown, but space, as you might be familiar with that church, is much more limited than we have here. So it is necessary to contact Joyce Wilson and her phone number is um, in the parish magazine or contact me if you really would like to attend that service there. We thank God that we are able to be here. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness in worship. To ease your exit from church, I shall exit from the chancel door and there's no log jam, and so that you can exit smoothly um, outside onto the path. Will you stand? The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.